Google Chrome is nearly 10 years old, and boy has it come a long way. So much so that Chrome is now the most popular web browser. In fact, as of this recording, two-thirds of us are using Google Chrome to browse on the web each and every day. So today, I want to share with you my five tips for getting the most out of Google Chrome, getting the most out of your browsing experience. And we're going to start by separating our tabs and learning a few different things about how we can manipulate and do more with our tabs up top. The first one has to do with actually taking something outside of your tab. Sometimes you may want to just focus on one particular website or perhaps one particular application. So to do so, all you need to do is click and drag. I'm going to pick this tab here. I'm going to start clicking and dragging it outside. And now when I release it, I am now focused exclusively on this particular tab, just the one tab. Now I haven't gotten rid of the rest of my files or the rest of my tabs over here. Now I have two browsers open, as you can see down in the taskbar. But if I want to, I can just focus exclusively on this particular web page. And often when I'm working on a large screen, I may drag it over to the right hand side and I can enjoy sort of a split view of two different browser windows open at the very same time. Now, if you want to bring this back into your original configuration, you can do so with the same technique. I'm going to click and hold, and this time I'm just going to drag it back up here. And here you can see it's brought it right back into my browser window. So now I'm in my original view. I've got my four different tabs listed at the top. Now, another great thing that you can do with tabs within Chrome is that you can pin certain tabs or keep them in the same place and don't be fearful of accidentally closing them. In this case, I usually want to keep something like my Google Keep tab open at all times or at least accessible at all times and I don't want to accidentally close it. So to pin a tab to your browser, all you need to do is right click on the desired tab come down and select pin tab. Now you'll notice a few different things change. Number one, it took that tab and brought it all the way over to the left, but it also condensed it. Now I can just see the logo here. I don't have an X anymore, so I can't accidentally close it. And it's always going to be accessible here in the left hand corner. The added benefit of pinning important tabs that you use frequently is that even if I close the browser, even if I close everything here, the next Next time I go to open up Chrome, this Google Keep tab will appear right here. Now, of course, you can pin more than just one tab. There might be three or four applications that you always want to uh, be accessible when you're browsing. And the other great thing about pinning tabs is it keeps them nice and small, right? It keeps it nice and uncluttered. And if you want to unpin it, you can simply right click and select the unpin option. Now, the next tip I want to share with you has to do with uh, Zoom and actually taking a closer look or maybe getting a further look depending on the type of website or web page that you're dealing with. When I'm dealing with Trello, sometimes I want to get a higher level view and maybe I want to see more cards at one time. So if I want to change the Zoom level, all I need to do is go over to the three dots here and come down to Zoom and I can either uh, zoom out a bit, maybe I'm going to zoom out to 80% so I can work with more cards or depending on the website that I'm working with maybe they have really small text I can zoom in to a, uh, a higher resolution I can get a closer peek at the words and the images that I'm looking at now the great thing about zoom in Chrome is that it's actually going to remember this zoom level with the website that I'm on so the next time I come to Trello it's going to remember that I was viewing it at 80% percent at the last time maybe that's my preferred view so you can have a variety of different websites at different zoom levels and and customize them to the one that is most appropriate to you or the one that you like the most for example when I'm reviewing my online banking you know and I've got lots of lines and different uh, financial statements that I'm looking at I will often take a, 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 a smaller view such as 80% or maybe 90% so that I can see more of those items on a single screen so zoom Zoom allows us to do that and will actually save that zoom level uh, depending on the website that we're on.
Last but not least, my fifth tip for you today is about browsing in incognito mode or secret mode. Now, most browsers allow you to do this. I just want to make sure that you know how to do this within Chrome. Let's say, for example, that you're wanting to uh, buy a special gift for uh, your wife, uh, your son, your child, someone else, maybe a, even a roommate, someone that you might, you might just share this computer with. Well, of course, you don't want them to find out accidentally that you've been shopping on Amazon and that they see the purchases or the things that you've been browsing. So what you can do is browse in incognito mode. To do so, we're going to go back to the settings area and select new incognito window. Now you're going to start off with this screen, which may look a little scary, but Chrome gives us a little helpful description of what this means and that Chrome won't save our browsing history. It won't save the cookies and site data, and it won't save information entered in forms. This is a great way to give yourself a bit of a clean slate as you're browsing the internet. You'll also notice in the top left-hand corner that we have an incognito icon there just to let us know that we are in this mode. So now, when I go to uh, Amazon.com, uh, you will notice that I am not signed in to my account. Usually it would say here, hello, Scott, but it's never going to say that when I enter into incognito mode uh, because it doesn't know me yet. This is a, a like a brand new browser window as if I've just logged into uh, logged into it freshly. So none of these advertisements are specifically to me or based on my browsing history because it hasn't followed me here. Now, of course, you can use the incognito window or the incognito mode for other purposes as well if you're wanting to hide your browsing history. But this can also be a great way to test certain sites, not only if you don't want to be followed, but to see what the sites are showing you when you are not signed into your account or when you don't have cookies that are following you around the internet. Of course, when you're done, you can just close this browser and your existing browser remains open. It doesn't replace what you were doing before in the past. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe right here to Simpletivity. Remember, being productive does not need to be difficult. In fact, it's very simple.